Hello, my name is Ben Looms. I am the CEO and creative director of Sirenscape, and it's wonderful to be here with you. So sad that we can't be together at this awesome show. This was going to be the first year that uh, Sirenscape was going to do Tabletop Live. I love London. I love the vibrant atmosphere. And uh, yeah, I love getting any excuse to travel over the waves far from far away Sydney to be with you and to hang out with hang out with people and to chat and nerd out and talk about our characters and all that sort of stuff. We are going to do some really, really cool stuff in this seminar today, talking all about uh, music and sound, the, the ability of sound to activate emotion. Uh, we're going to have a look at Sirenscape itself and, uh, and yeah, find out about that. But two things before that. First, just in case you've been living under a rock, what is Sirenscape? Sirenscape is the app that brings beautiful, immersive sound and music to your tabletop games. It's uh, not a 15-minute looped recording, but a whole dynamic machine designed specifically for creating seamless, uh, beautiful environments that are incredibly realistic, uh, cross-fade beautifully from one to another, and the whole uh, user interface is designed specifically for game masters to keep the load of bringing the right mood at the right time to an absolute minimum so that you can concentrate on gaming, which is why we came. You'll see some use of Sirenscape later in the show. Uh, yeah, me, I am uh, a singer and a pianist and a cellist and a bad recorder player. And uh, yeah, I studied composition at Sydney University. Um, I yeah grew up tabletop gaming. I received the Red Box probably when I think I was about 11, which was amazing. The incredible art in that uh, that, that red box blew my tiny mind. And uh, yeah, pretty soon I was in inventing my own adventures and my own monsters and studying them up and going on adventures with my friends. Back when I played uh, back then in my you know early teens, it was more about kind of just killing the stats and then adding the numbers of gold onto your character sheet. Um, I had a break from Dungeons and Dragons and games like that for a little while in my early 20s while I studied and then got back into it with a brand new gaming group uh, in my late 20s and have been playing regularly since. It's fantastic and I love it. All the tabletop games. I love uh, the D6 Star Wars in particular. I love Cyberpunk and I love Call of Cthulhu and uh, I played a lot of Pathfinder and now I'm playing a lot of uh, 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. So yay! Thank you, role-playing games. You bring me much joy and awesomeness. Awesome. Right, the genesis of Sirenscape. I was playing those games when I returned to gaming. Uh, it did seem strange to me as a composer and a musician and just a general lover of music that we were playing in silence. You know, you go to the movies and there's a movie soundtrack. You watch television shows and there's a music soundtrack. All that power of music, which we're going to talk about soon and how it works, uh, really adds to that experience and immerses the players. So it did seem strange. So I started making little recordings on CD, in fact. <laughs> Loop tracks about 15 minutes long on uh, on CD. You'd hit, hit the right track number and then hit uh, repeat. And um, yeah, it was, it was really excellent. It made a huge difference to the table. But... It kind of has its inherent, well, bump my mic, has its sort of inherent inherent problems. The repetition, the fact that the same sounds can come round and round and round, uh, the lack of sort of customizability. You can't, um, you know, just add some rain in or turn the dogs off or anything like that. And actually the genesis of, genesis of Sirenscape itself comes back to this one funny moment when I was at the gaming table and the PCs were in the town with lovely town sounds that I'd built and they were meant to just take the plot hook and uh, run with it and go and rescue the person or whatever they were supposed to. And they'd been there now for like 45 minutes uh, just negotiating the price and how much they were getting and whether they could get half in advance and then whether they could get some free horses or some healing potions or whatever, on and on and on. Lots of fantastic role-playing and funny interactions with the poor mayor who was trying to just get them on the adventure. And uh, eventually, like the fifth time this recording had come around, came around and there was this one little distinctive pattern in there, which was like, Two dogs woofing and a howl from a distant wolf. I don't know why there was a wolf in town, but anyway, that's what it was. It was like, woof, woof, oh! And the players actually stopped the game and stopped the drama. And all together, along with the sound, which had gone round and round and round, all went, woof, woof, oh! And it kind of like, darn it. So instead of immersing the players in the game, it was actually had removed them all, made them 100% aware that they were listening to a recording. And uh, yeah, and made a big joke of it, which was sad. So I started making my recordings longer. Obviously on a CD, I had almost an hour or like almost 80 minutes, in fact. 
but then I, there I am dragging sounds, you know, into random positions and trying to mix them up, taking those two dog sounds and then trying to making a different timing and, ah, oh, seemed like a lot of work. Um, you know, whenever you're doing something laborious, there's always an opportunity for a computer to do, to do it for you. So I kind of thought surely a computer could pick up some samples and play them at random intervals, possibly even vary the volume, maybe even apply reverb and things like that. So I grabbed, um, the programming language Python, which is a wonderful pr programming language you can get writing really, really quickly. And uh, yeah, wrote a dodgy version of what is, is now Sirenscape. I shared it online as donationware because back in the internet days back then, that's what you did. You can actually go on the Wayback Machine and search for Sirenscape and see our really, really old website, which is super cool. Uh, people were, yeah, donating to it. And pretty soon people were asking for an iOS version and for it to be better, which was probably a totally reasonable request. And um yeah, I didn't really know how to write in what was only Objective uh, Objective C or something, some weird language, some hybrid of C that iOS had, and I was like, mm -hmm. so I was working on a project called What Opera at that time, an amazing project where I was the conductor and musical director, and me and a uh, a, uh, a director, director, an acting director, and an assistant were going to high schools, and we were writing dramatic works from scratch. Uh, we would let the, the students devise the plot from scratch, uh, write every single word of the script, and then I would help them write music to go along with that. We'd teach the um, music back to them again. And then another, along with four other, three other schools, they would perform their works in a professional theatre. Now, that was all being funded by uh, Graham Wood, who's an amazing Australian entrepreneur. He got his big start um, in, in tech. So I thought he might have some tech contact, contacts, maybe someone who could program. I started explaining that to him and he was like, whoa, what is this thing? And he's someone who really has a vision for uh, transformative technologies. So I explained what it was, uh, the engagement the audience had already had in Sirenscape. And he was pretty much pretty quickly getting me to write business proposals and do audience studies and uh, all this sort of technical stuff. And yeah, pretty soon we had an actual business a proper proper business with a with a yeah a, a sort of a budget and all that sort of stuff we rewrote the whole um program in unity unity is a fantastic uh java based thing it was there now it's c sharp plus based but uh yeah and and what you can do in unity is you can release the same from the same code base across all platforms so now sirenscape gets released for ios yay and android tablets and phones um pc and mac and even um, Linux, which is super cool as of recently. So yes, that's the history of Sirenscape. Uh, and that's where I'm coming from. And nowadays I get to, yeah, travel all over the world and go to amazing conferences and hang out with <laughs> fantastic geeky role players, except not this year, which really sucks. But we're all staying safe, which is good and important. And uh, bring on a vaccine and bring on freedom. That's all I can say. Right. So today... What are we doing? Right. Why music and sound at the gaming table? What does it do and how does it do it? And if you just can listen to one part of this talk, that's the one you should really, really talk, uh, listen to because it's super cool. Um, I'm going to show me prepping using the Sirenscape online player for an actual session as if I'm having to prep on the st spot because I've completely forgotten to do any prep for the game at all. And you can watch me do that and you can see the process of how I construct the sound and music I need and how I bring it together and play it in the game. We're also going to have a little bit of a look at some sound design of some of um, the sound sets that we've created for the Dungeons & Dragons role-playing game, the official sounds. Yay, so cool to have that license. Amazing. And uh, we'll give some insights there about how you can do it yourself. If you have any questions, do drop by our Facebook or our Twitter or also just search for forum and Sirenscape. There's links. There's going to be links in the in, in the description of things below, uh, and you can find out how to find that information. Do engage with us and ask us, and yeah, you know, all that sort of stuff. Make suggestions. All those super cool things. I would also recommend you go here, Twitch.tv/Sirenscape. There will be lots more content like this appearing there soon, including some some live plays and and yeah, real seminars about sound design and music and composition and all sorts of fun stuff. So go there. Pause this video for a moment and just hit follow and turn on the bell or whatever you're supposed to do. And uh, you can stay up to date. 
with <laughs> my blind just sprung up. Oh, that's fantastic. My my real blind as, as opposed to my virtual blind. Yes. Don't you like this background? It's the city of Corazon out my window. I really, really like it. Right. If you have any questions, once you try and start to use Sirenscape, please do not hesitate to grab us at support at sirenscape.com because we have people on support all the way around the whole clock by virtue of being an international company with people in London and Sydney and Seattle. And uh, yeah, we can usually respond to your emails super, super fast. So don't be confused or frustrated. Ask us for help. All right, let's make a start. I'm going to go to my main demo. I don't think I've spot my color balance too much. And I'm going to search for the Catan sounds. Groovy, groovy, groovy. And I'm going to start the sweeping Catan theme. And here's a bit of text from one of my favorite modules in the world, one of the most famous box texts of all time. A group of seven men approaches. They are neither, they are following the road east and are making good time, neither tarrying nor running. Their faces are expressionless. One is dressed as a cleric of some sort, and another is dressed as a traveling drummer. The others could be peasants or serfs going from one location to another for harvest season. Each carries some sort of weapon. It is plain they are not soldiers by their haphazard way of walking. They do not seem to be joking loudly or singing as they advance. What's that? What about this one. Boom. A group of seven men approaches. They are following the road east and are making good time, neither tarrying nor running. Their faces are expressionless. One is dressed as a cleric of some sort and another is dressed as a traveling drummer. The others could be peasants or serfs going from one location to another for harvest season. Each carries some sort of weapon. It is plain that they are not soldiers by their haphazard way of walking. They do not seem to be joking loudly or singing as they advance. Interesting, huh? Oop. Okay, what about this one? A group of seven men approaches. They are following the road east and are making good time, neither tarrying nor running. Their faces are expressionless. One is dressed as a cleric of some sort, and another is dressed as a traveling drummer. The others could be peasants or serfs going from one location to another for harvest season. Each carries some sort of weapon. It is plain they're not soldiers by their haphazard way of walking. They do not seem to be joking loudly or singing as they advance. group of seven men approaches. They are following the road east and are making good time, neither tarrying nor running. Their faces are expressionless. One is dressed as a cleric of some sort, and another is dressed as a traveling drummer. The others could be peasants or serfs going from one location to another for harvest season. Each carries some sort of weapon. It is plain they are not soldiers by their haphazard way of walking. They do not seem to be joking loudly or singing as they advance. Isn't that amazing? Okay, what about this one? A group of seven men approaches. They are following the road east and are making good time, neither tarrying nor running. Their faces are expressionless. One is dressed as a cleric of some sort and another is dressed as a traveling drummer. The others could be peasants or serfs going from one location to another for harvest season. Each carries some sort of weapon. 
It is plain they are not soldiers by their haphazard way of walking. They do not seem to be joking loudly or singing as they advance. <laughs> so what does the music do there? How does it make that scene change so dramatically? The music is able to completely reinterpret the scene. It elicits uh, involuntary, automatic emotional responses. And it does all this, if you weren't thinking about what was actually going on because I was demonstrating it, subliminally. We don't think, oh gosh, that drummer just did a cheery rim shot. Those people must be jovial and friendly. And we don't think, ah, a minor ninth. That bodes ill. Music can develop character. It connects uh, emotions and ideas together. Now, Wagner fully developed a concept called the leitmotif in his own music. He used music to train the listener to respond quickly and automatically to a remarkably short stimulus. He would take a fragment of music and strongly associate it with ideas and emotions. This is from a dictionary. Leitmotif, a current recurrent theme throughout a music, a musical or literary composition associated with a particular person, idea or situation. Okay. I built myself a little sound set called Leitmotif. So what does this do for you? <laughs> what an amazing short mo mo light motive. Uh, seven notes only. And instantly I know exactly what's going on. I can see the James Bond uh, that, that I like and, and love. And I know he's just done something awesome. Like he's fighting with the bad guy in the bathroom. And uh, he's pushed the bad guy into the bath. And then there's a bar hitter right there, which he chucks in the bath and electrocutes the baddie. Or he's driving his incredibly expensive vintage car and does some particularly uh, irresponsible piece of uh, handling around a corner and pulls it off. It's associated with being awesome and fantastic and star uh, spyish. What about this one? What does this do for you? So this light motif occurs in its fully fledged form when the fellowship uh, comes up over the top of the mountain. Of course, walking slightly in slow motion, like my parties always like to walk in slow motion when they're returning to town in victory um, or walking out of the dungeon. Uh, for this, this says to me uh, companionship and loyalty and power and strength and love and success and goodness. All those things just packaged in that one tiny little fragment of music. What about this one? Hmm, it has warmth and familiar things and soup and, and uh, innocence and, and uh, goodness. There's a lot of this music at the beginning of Lord of the Rings. There needs to be a whole chunk of reason for you to ultimately care what happens to, to the Shire and to um, Middle Earth so that there's jeopardy for the adventure. Now, what's cool about this leitmotif is used throughout the movie and it reoccurs at the very end when Sam and Frodo are on the edge of the mountain and they've completed their mission but it basically looks like the lava is going to murder them and the theme plays again but recontextualized musically it's a much, much sort of darker blurry color and it kind of has this deep melancholy sentimental longing sort of feel of still goodness goodness lost goodness restored but uh but uh irretrievable and of course then the the eagles come and rescue them <gasps> spoiler uh right what about this one <laughs> ah, 
so yeah so you if you're in the water and you hear that theme or think about that theme it has only one response you're going to be eaten by a giant shark just two notes literally going dun 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 incredibly tiny little fragment of music but a, a strong association even probably if you haven't ever actually seen the movie you know this leitmotif and you know uh what it means to the stars um you know what it means to avalanche to to, to the characters in the story or to you all right so i would suggest that these light motifs create inevitably a involuntary visceral reaction. Mm -hmm. If you are only using the color of your voice and the descriptive power of your words to paint your scenes, I would argue that you're missing out on a whole wealth of potential, a potential for immersion and emotion one that's been uh, used in movies and television for years, for decades, even in theatre, in fact. But wait, there's more. Movies don't only use music, do they? Okay. The director of Bride of Frankenstein, James Whale, said, Lock yourself in a windowless room alone. Turn out the light and put your radio on in such a way that you get only the screams and moans and unearthly noises produced by static. Unless you are a rare exception, you will very hastily switch on the light, fully expecting to see some terrifying intruder in the empty room with you. Up and coming uh, director George Lucas said, the sound and music are 50% of the entertainment in a movie. Whoa. I and mean, this is the guy who directed the image and the, and uh, wrote the scripts often himself and uh, had a complete vision. But here he is saying 50% of the entertainment in a movie is the sound and music. Okay. There is more. Because he said sound and music, didn't he? So what does he mean by that? So just as music can create involuntary illicit responses. So can sounds. Have a listen to this. Hmm. So what does that do? Any large larynx creature probably can have large teeth and a large appetite and is extremely dangerous for a homo sapien with our thin thin skin um so we have tens of thousands of years of, of of survival adaption to instantly have a fight or flight reaction to this sound even if we don't consciously sense it even if it's just soft enough to only hit our um, subliminal perception it's still going to uh, get adrenaline in our system. Uh, you know, our eyes will contract, um, our stomach will shut off, all those things. Okay, what about this one? Skittering spiders, just searching for some of the elements in Sirenscape. Here we are. This is where, make sure you got headphones on, okay? If you haven't got headphones, go and get them now. Pause the video. Put on headphones. Ooh. <laughs> I don't even really need to say anything about that. That's just, just terrible. The sound of tiny little things with more legs than appropriate and more eyes than anything should have. Right, this one. Uh, the sound of a warm hearth. Now, this isn't the roaring sound of a bushfire, forest fire, whatever you call it, in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, nor like the burn of a blow torch. This, is, torch. this is the particular sound of a happily crackling small fire in a hearth. 
And for me, it creates a sense of uh, yeah, warmth and familiarity and uh, safety. What about this one? <laughs> we talked about a large larynx. This is a little tiny larynx. You actually know the size of this creature. It's like, you know, medium-sized dog. <laughs> Definitely can't be as big as a horse. And it's so cute and vulnerable. And it's not going to hurt us. Far from chewing us. Um, yeah. What about this one? Oh. Now that's something very, very big, possibly a long way away or some kind of unearthly power or something. If you've seen Jurassic Park, you know what happens to the cup of water <laughs> when this sound passes through. It, it vibrates in that distinctive pattern and makes us go, oh, okay, yeah. This is the sort of sound that can definitely happen subliminally if, if players are concentrating on, on um, you know, something else of the story or they're acting can help to keep people focused and uh, sort of, uh, you know, really, really engaged. If you didn't have headphones on, you probably didn't hear that, by the way. If you've got really lovely speakers like in my studio, you did. Uh, or in my games room, then you did. But uh, yeah, you're not going to hear that on a phone. Right, building collapse, this one. <laughs> so that's not going to um, go subliminal. People are definitely going to notice that one. And it paints the whole picture. Cracked wood, catastrophe. Uh, if it was, you could combine some screams in there and you've got a whole lot of story without having to tell, say a word at all. One of the things I really like is this one. Say I say, I get to my turn and I'm going to cast Fireball. I can either just pick up my dice and... 6, 7, 10, 9, 12, like that. Or, I can just trigger my fireball spell sound. Or roll my dice, don't even have to say what the spell is. It's so awesome. Or, say it comes down to your turn and you're the cleric. Cast a quick cure spell and be awesome. Okay, so that's the power of music and sound at gaming table. If I haven't convinced you <laughs> that, that it's important and significant, then I didn't try hard enough. How do you do that for yourself? How do you create that immersion for your players in a way that doesn't distract the dungeon master from running the game? Mm, extremely important. It's going to be difficult to do those things managing uh, Spotify playlists or YouTube videos especially when the ads come in thank you um and yeah yeah a, a tool i've built here for myself mainly and people seem to like it and i'm going to show you a quick demo of prepping for a game ready for it oh damn he said spontaneously i forgot to do any sound prep for my game at all this evening this is going to have to be done right now while i run the game in front of you all okay i've got a few moments while my players stuff around and get their character sheets or quickly rewrite their character sheets because they always forget them. Um, so I'm going to quickly just get some stuff together from what I know is probably going to happen. And I'm just going to have a limited amount of time to do it. So in my game tonight, the first scene is in a mysteriously slightly foreboding elven village. So I'm going to start with the Undermountain Forest. I'm going to trigger that just to create a base while they get themselves ready to start spreading the news. Spreading the news. Right, I'm going to first duplicate this sound set boom, to make my own private version. Sirenscape works away. Now I'm actually looking at Under, Under Mountain Forest Custom. And I'm gonna change that to Friday's Game. So now this is my own sound set that I can edit and make my own, make any changes, and I'm not damaging the content on the Sirenscape server or anything like that. All right. 
I'm probably going to need some battle music at some point, and I've got a few things in mind. I've been playing Dragon Heist recently, and I happen to have noted the name of the particularly cool music in that, which is because it was very simple, it was D&D battle music. So I'm going to go click. You heard it before when I put it under the, um, the text that I was reading at the beginning, the awesome forest oracle box text. I've also know that Avernus is supposed to be kind of cool. Um, I haven't actually played that, so I'm going to go into exploring Avernus. And I know they have some metal stuff. Some heavy metal music. Avernus rock music. Okay, that looks appropriate. So I'm going to copy that element, just the music one, to Friday's, there it is, Friday's game. I'm going to go copy. That'll copy that element with its tracks in there so I can trigger it later. I know they're probably going to end up in a swamp at some point if they ever stop negotiating with the, um, <laughs> with the elves about free health potions and free horses. Uh, oppressive heat sounds right. I'm just going to take that. I'm going to take that entire mood. Now what a mood does here is it starts a series of elements at a certain volume. The whole sound design is made up of a series of elements. Maybe the sound of crickets, a bit of crackling uh, mud, some cicadas, some bubbles, a bit of a heat haze kind of sound, some frogs every now and then. And that is all made up by a single mood. So I'm going to copy that entire mood. Boom! It's already auto-filled Friday's game from the other entry. And I know they're going to meet some lizard folk. Does Sirenscape even have lizard folk? Let's find out. Okay, maybe they do. It says that there's a mood with the word lizard folk. There it is, lizard folk battle. Okay, I'm going to copy that entire mood too. Copy. Good. Okay, there's some frantic prep. How long did that take? Now we're playing. I've already got my, my lovely music going. <coughs> I'm being incredibly descriptive and role playing my elves who all have five syllable names beautifully. I'm going to read this box text because it's another bit of my favorite from Forest Oracle and who couldn't have more Forest Oracle? The front door is not locked. The sound of gentle breathing comes from inside. When the door is opened, sunlight illuminates the room. A young man sleeps on the bed. The room is furnished with two wooden chairs, a table, couch, pantry, bed, chest, and a stack of firewood for the fireplace. Now, when I read the text immediately underneath this box test, <laughs> it points out very clearly the fireplace has no secret compartments. Okay, as a dungeon master, I'm going to assume that uh, also lacking uh, secret compartments is the table, the couch, the pantry, the bed, the chest, the stack of firewood and presumably the young man. But just in case you need to know, the fireplace has no <laughs> secret compartments. <laughs> I love that box deck so much. Right, eventually they leave and go to the swamp and there's my oppressive heat mood. You can see that Sirenscape copied in all the elements it requires to make that mood. And they're all playing. It crossfaded beautifully. Thank you, Sirenscape. Uh, we split the party, they say. Okay. <laughs> You just bit the party, really? The sorcerer quickly casts a message spell. So I'm going to type message into the search over here. There's the message spell. Sorcerer message. Excellent. In just the time it says, what was it takes for me to say, what's your message? I can type in that message search and trigger it. And he says, his message is, uh, don't split the party or the DM will hate us. Right. Yes, I will hate you. You're attacked by lizard folk. <laughs> and they immediately attack. Awesome. I'm going to set off my Dungeons & Dragons battle music. That's cool. Oh, I suddenly remember. Bugbears. There were bugbears in this. It's all in my stat block and everything. So I'm going to quickly search for bugbear. I know there's bugbear battle. It's one of the free sound sets that comes. And I'm going to start the battle cries and hoots and hisses and curses. Excellent. So that's all running simultaneously. And I'm going to save that as a new mood. Bugs and Liz. To create that mood so I can go back to that, easily get back to that later. Okay, so that's now become a mood. I've had this in front of me the whole time. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you just have to imagine what I did. Um, yeah, fantastic. So that battle goes on for a while. See this mood here? I can get back to that again later whenever I want. 
Eventually the battle finishes, so I hit oppressive heat. Oh, you've been poisoned, I say sadly as a dungeon master. I search for restoration. Uh, I'm going to cast, yep, restoration. The ranger casts restoration. You heard me cast a cure spell before, which is super cool. If you don't find a particular spell, because, uh, uh, you know, we haven't made the sound for it, or you can't remember how to type for it, you can't find it, you can actually just type in a level first. Yep, excellent, there we are. We can cast a first level arcane. Or a first level divine. Very slightly different, and they go from, yeah, from first level, fourth level, all the way up to epic. This is a lovely fourth one. The ninth level spells are insane. Listen to this. So remember, go to uh, forum. Search for forum and Sirenscape. Go to our forums, ask questions, or ask us questions on Twitter, or by support at sirenscape.com as our questions occur to you, because this is meant to be interactive. But sadly, we're not together. All right, so they finally get to the lizard folks' home, and they, without any kind of decent planning of any kind, they attack the lizard folk again. And this time, because they've been so bad, I'm gonna add a green dragon in. <laughs> Excellent. So once again, I'm going to just add a green dragon element. And yes, I'll probably want to use the breath weapon, so I'm going to add that in as well. Go down and turn on those green dragon roars. Excellent. Turn it down a touch. Trigger the breath weapon. Excellent. They managed to kill one of the uh, lizard folk. So you need a Wilhelm scream. Every uh, Stormtrooper death deserves a Wilhelm scream. One of the players rolls a one. Central And eventually they finally achieve victory. So I'm going to change over to the swamp sound and tri trigger the victory fanfare. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. There you go. In the past when I've done this seminar, there have been some questions that have been asked that have stood out in particular. So I'm going to answer a couple of those questions now before we do a final little look at some of Sirenscape's content. Thank you for being with me and thank you for still being with me now. Uh, can I use Sirenscape in my stream or my podcast or my YouTube? Yes. Go to Sirenscape uh, FAQ or search for that sort of question on our forums and you'll find all the information you need. Essentially, you can use Sirenscape under Creative Commons Attribution. It won't give you copyright stings. And it's all basically exchanged for a shout out to Sirenscape in your stream and some links. We also have affiliate programs and things like that if you want to talk to us about them. Who needs to pay for a remote game is another thing. And how do I pay for it at all? Right. You can um, download the Sirenscape player for free, the fantasy player. You can also use the Sirenscape online player for free. You don't even have to register to use the fantasy player, the offline version at all. Just comes with free content built in. You can then register an account and purchase individual sound sets one by one or the sounds you need for the Ghost of Salt Marsh Adventure or Rome of the Frost Maiden or whatever. Um, and then if you want to run games remotely, you grab a Super Siren subscription, which not only unlocks all of Sirenscape's content, including a huge uh, bunch of community content, but also uh, gains you permanent ownership of every new piece of uh, content that we release during the period of your active subscription. And it also, of course, unlocks the ability to run games. You pay for the subscription and you can do everything you just saw me do. All your players just need a free registered account and they can follow your game and become your minion. And they just run the little online player app. That's what's making the sound on my system. They run that on their system and they hear all the sounds, just like we've been hearing all the sounds today as I trigger them. Cool. How do I get a new feature in Sirenscape? You go to the forums and you complain about it and you ask for it and you suggest it and you get into discussion with us. Pretty much most of the really, really cool features that are in Sirenscape today that weren't in the original version have been the result of community discussion. In fact, the online player at all, the fact that you can run games remotely is a result of community saying, you should do this. I'm so glad we did, considering what happened uh, this year. 
Excellent. There's some of the questions that have been asked that have been uh, particularly salient. If you have more questions, if you're watching this on YouTube, then um, type them in the comments and we can reply there. Or, yeah, even better, come to our forums. Right. Just for the last 10 minutes, just a little bit of a look at the anatomy of some sound design. Okay, Baldus. Uh, Ghost of Salt, my salvage operations. Let's look at that one. <coughs> Salvage operation two, I think it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to trigger a mood over here on the left. And then I'm going to turn all the elements down and show you each of the elements individually. So let's do that. Let's look at this, say round 14. This is a massive, spoiler, um, battle with this huge octopus thing that happens near the end of uh, salvage operation in Ghost of Salt Marsh. And actually, the sounds sort of ramp up and up and up and up every single round. Super, super cool. Not every single round, every sort of triggered at various different times in the battle. Amazing. So, I'm going to turn down all of the elements. And then I'm going to turn them up one by one. And we're going to hear what's in them. And then I'm going to say goodbye. But if you're interested in doing your own sound design, you should definitely watch this a bit. You can basically bring in your own samples. You can even remix and mix up the stuff that's uh, already in Sirenscape. All right, there's music here. There's this part of the music. Hmm. Okay, add it onto this part of music. Together they sound like this. That's cool. And there's this part of the music. Hmm. Add it together, they all sound like this. There's a fourth music track that's actually turned down for this because it gets added when things get even more epic. Right below deck. What's this one? <laughs> Let's remember what that epic battle sounded like, and this is a part of it. Cool, huh? Okay, what about this? Mm -hmm. Okay, just occasional creaks of floorboards and a very important part of the sound design to make the sound like spoiler, the ship is getting destroyed and torn apart. Another element of the same sounds with different timings. A bit more severe sounds. Okay, water in food storage. Okay, so water flowing around. Water on the Emperor, which is the ship. Okay, so that's it swooshing around. So if we add all those together... In the right balance, obviously. I've forgotten the balance. <laughs> ah, so much balancing. It creates a really realistic water sound. Okay, so what else? Tentacles. That's interesting. Let's hear that. Ah, so this one's timing. Waiting, 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 waiting. Each time an element plays, <laughs> it waits a randomized amount of time before it plays. Then it picks a random sample from the list of available samples, puts it in a random direction. Here. Hope you know that. Puts it at a random distance, applies the reverb appropriate for the environment, and then plays it and repeats. Tentacles strike. Coming around here eventually. Waiting. Waiting. There you go. <laughs> Splashes. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Ten octopus cries. Timing out. And that siren is outside. It's not in Sirenscape. Water through the cracks. Creaking rigging. More splashing sounds. Water breach. Boat being... <gasps> boat being crushed. Spoiler. Okay. Right, I'm going to play all of those together and see how they combine. Cool. 
cool, huh? You can also trigger one-shots, we call them. To go in, whoops, I'll turn the volume up on them. This is the master volume for the whole mix. Each player has their own little volume control themselves to play the, to control it for themselves on the system. And then here's the volume for just the one-shots. Ah, it's chaotic and awesome. I keep bumping my microphone. Now, if you have one more thing we'll look at before I say goodbye. Boulder skate. Ah! Genial day, here we are. Okay, so here's the city of Boulder Skate, which is used in the Descent to of No, the... Oh, yeah, Descent to Avernus as well? I don't remember. I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's where it starts, yeah. Look at all these elements. There's some groovy music to go along to create a bit of a mood. There's multiple channels of just generally people chatting. Hear these two tracks. <laughs> There's individual uh, little variations of chunks of chatter which sort of come in and out because it's very important to avoid any sense of repetition when you're listening to the sound design. There's bottle chinks. I can make this element play immediately by turning it off and turning it on. Okay, so they play every now and then. Who would have thought? Once again, general hubbub, raucous crowd one. The raucous crowd recordings are actually recorded by I think the Dungeons and Dragons team at Wizards of the Coast. That was a fun day, I'll tell you what. A gusty wind, which has turned out sheep! <laughs> Far away sheep and horses. Remember, sometimes the sheep might be close. The sheep can be anywhere between 10 and 20 meters away. So sometimes they might be louder and sometimes they might be softer. Dogs, cows, horses, bird song, and all that combines to create this lovely, genial day. And there's also in the Boulder Skate sound pack a chilly winter night. A chilly, a blustery winter day, every season, night and day. Right! I've gone on for long enough and I think I have got through most of my list of things. I hope I've given you some interesting insights. I've had fun, not as much fun as if this seminar was actually live with you there or I'd be chatting with you at the stand at uh, Tabletop Live. I uh, hope to see you next year. Yes, yes! In England, it's going to be amazing! So everyone stay safe, stay well, uh, yeah, jump on the forums or uh, Facebook or Twitter or in the comments here. Do go to the Twitch channel here and follow that Twitch channel. As I said, there's going to be some really, really cool content appearing there very soon, including live play games and more Yeah, deep dives into content and sound design. Yeah, grab yourself a trial subscription. Search for Trial Sirenscape. There'll be links in the description for that. You can actually get all the access that I've shown you today for free for a classic 30-day free trial that if you cancel before the first payment comes out, then you don't pay anything. All that sort of stuff, right? I can't think of anything else to say. Then um, stay safe, stay well, and game on. And from my point of view, the noisier, the better. Excellent. See you later.